guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at finding the surface area of prisms and cylinders. So as we're looking at surface area, what we're talking about is we're talking about the total area of all of the faces of our polygons. Now there are two ways to calculate surface area. One of them is to just find the area of each face individually and then add them all together. Or sometimes we've got formulas that make it a little bit quicker in order for us to find the surface area. So as we're looking at the surface area of a prism, As I mentioned, one thing that we could do is find the area of each face individually, or we've got a formula which can help us figure out what the surface area is. Now we'll need to define what these letters are. SA on the left hand side just means surface area. This capital B in our formula means that we have to find the area of the base of our prism. The P in the formula stands for the perimeter of the base. And then lastly, the H stands for the height of the prism. So as we're looking at this prism, remember our surface area formula says that we first have to find the area of the base. So looking at this picture, the base shape is a rectangle. So in order to find the area of a rectangle, we take length times width or base times height, but we're looking at the 10 inches and the five inches. So if we multiply those together in order to find the area of our base, okay, taking 10 times five, we end up getting 50 as the area of that base. The next thing we need to find is that perimeter of our base. Since we're dealing with a rectangle, we know that opposite sides have to be congruent. So if this front piece is 10 inches, that means the piece on the back is also 10 inches. If the piece on the right is 5 inches, then the piece on the left also has to be 5 inches. So if we add all of those together in order to find the perimeter of the base, we've got 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus 5. Adding all those together, we end up with a perimeter of 30. And then the last thing we need is the height of the prism itself. So that's going to be our 6 inch length. Now we've got all the pieces that we need in order to plug them into our surface area formula. So we're going to take 2 times the area of the base, which we found was 50, plus the perimeter, which is 30, times the height of 6. Now if we take 2 times 50, that's 100. Plus, if we take 30 times 6, that's 180. So then if we add those together, we end up with 280 as our surface area. Since this is an area, we do need to label this. All of our measurements were given to us in inches, and this is area, so we need to put a squared on the inches. So it's 280 inches squared for the surface area. In this example, we've got a triangular prism. As far as finding the surface area, the formula is exactly the same. It's two times the base plus the perimeter times the height. So let's first find the area of the base of our prism. Since we're looking at a triangle, remember the area formula for a triangle is one half times the base times the height. And the base and the height make a right angle in the triangle. So we're going to take one half times six times eight, since those two lengths make the right angle within our triangle. So if we do half of six, that's three, and then three times eight is 24. So we've got 24 as the area of the triangular bases. When we're finding the perimeter of the triangle, we have to add up all the sides. So we've got six plus eight plus 10. Well, 6 plus 8 is 14, plus 10 more is 24. And then we need the height of our prism. So that's going to be the 4 length on the outside. Now, as far as plugging these values into our formula, we end up with 2 times the area of the base, which we said was 24, plus the perimeter, which is 24 times 4. 2 times 24 is 48, and 4 times 24 is 96. And then if we add those together, we get 144. We do need to throw a label on this since this is an area problem. We were measuring in meters, and since it's area, that gets a squared on it. So 144 meters squared as the area of this prism. The next thing we're going to look at is finding the surface area of a cylinder. 
and a cylinder is very, very similar to a prism. The only difference is instead of having a polygon as the basis, we've got circles as the basis. So since a cylinder is so similar to a prism, the surface area formula is going to be very, very similar as well. As we're finding the surface area of a cylinder, we're still going to take 2 times the area of the base, and we're going to add something to that. But instead of using the perimeter as we're finding the surface area, circles, when we're talking about the perimeter or the distance around the outside, we call that the circumference. So we're going to use the circumference times the height. So we've got 2 times the area of the base plus the circumference of our circle times the height. So taking a look at the cylinder, remember the surface area formula says we take 2 times the area of the base plus the circumference times the height. So first let's find the area of the base. Since we're dealing with a circle, remember in order to find the area of a circle, we do pi r squared. So if we take 10 squared, that's 100, and 100 times pi, I'm just going to go to two decimals, we get 314.16. And then if we're looking at the circumference of our circle, remember in order to find the circumference, we take 2 times the radius times pi. So we've got 2 times 10 times pi. Well, 2 times 10 is 20, so then we have to take 20 times pi. And again, I'm going to go two decimals on this. We end up with 62.83. And then the last value that we need is the height of our cylinder, and that's the 15 centimeter length going up and down on the outside. So filling this information into our formula, we've got 2 times our 314.16 plus our 62.83 circumference times the height of 15. And I'm going to type all of this into my calculator. When we do that, we get 1570.77. And then we're going to throw our label on here. We were measuring in centimeters. And this is area, so the centimeters gets a squared on it. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.